Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team, and I wanted to make this video on the basics of options. What are options? What is the concept of options? And why do people like to buy and sell options? Well, they're, it's kind of a complicated concept with options. Uh, there's lots of moving parts, lots of different terminology that could be very confusing. It's not as simple as just buying and selling a stock. Uh, there's many different layers to options, just to the basics alone, never mind the more advanced advanced sides and the advanced parts of options. And that's why I like to use a helpful resource like Investopedia to help guide our members and people that follow us because we don't like to just take information from another site, copy and paste it into our own PowerPoint and make us look like we're the heroes and, you know, uh, we came up with the information ourselves. We like to use resources that many of these other leaders in the industry might use, but, you know, hey, who knows, they might take that information make it look like it's their own, and then there you go. That's part of their trading course. Uh, we don't like to do that. We like to give credit where credit's due. And Investopedia is a very helpful resource that we use and like to recommend to people that follow us because, again, we're not going to pretend like we're some experts in options and know every single terminology and every definition and exactly what it all does because there's, again, a lot of moving parts. Options are, can be very complicated. They come in layers, <clears throat> and you got to just give them the time that they deserve to really learn them. And as you learn them, lots of the definitions, you might not understand the definitions, but that's okay. You'll start to understand the concept and how things work and why you would buy, you know, an option or whether you, um, you know, when you, well, whether you would buy or sell an option or whether, you, whether you're going to buy a call or a put uh, whether you're going to do a credit spread or, you know, an iron condor. There's so many different terminologies and each thing um, each concept of options has its own reasons why people do it. So, you know, depending on what your strategy is, there's a strategy to do um, what you're looking to do within those options. So, again, the world of options is a very broad concept. It can, it can go as complicated or as simple as you would like it to go. But I'm going to focus in this video on just the basics of options and just try to really simplify it. Again, Investopedia is a very helpful resource that you could always go to and reference if you ever... Um, have any questions. And again, we have a, a free options trading course on our website at bullishbears.com where you can head over there and take our free basic options trading course. And uh, like I said, we do our best to try to simplify everything to make it as simplified as possible, even with such a complicated concept, concept such as options. But when we start with just the basics of options and what the definition is, um, I'm going to read you the definition, and then I'm going to try to do my best to explain it to you as simply as I can. Um, an option is a contract, and it gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, that's the key, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date or an expiration date. An option, just like a bond or a stock, is a security. It is also a binding contract with strictly defined terms and properties. <clears throat> so what does that mean exactly? Well, you have a choice in the stock market. You know, many people will buy or sell stocks. You know, that's one option. You can go and buy a stock, buy a certain amount of shares of a popular company, and you own those shares until you decide to sell them either for a profit or a loss, right? With options, it's a bit different. You know, there's a couple different strategies, or actually there's many different strategies that people use when uh, doing options, but typically they're doing it to either, one, they would like to own shares of a particular company, but they would like to get them at a discount. So they might buy an option and, or enter into an agreement with somebody on the planet that owns those shares, and they're willing to pay what they call a premium, basically a premium to get access to those shares hopefully at a discounted price. So if they do their proper technical and fundamental analysis, they're ideally going to exercise that stock, get that stock at a discount, and own those shares. And then they can decide whether they want to hold those shares for a long period of time or sell them at whatever specific time down the road. But they're ideally, if they're exercising that contract, they're entering into an agreement that someone with somebody that owns those shares that's willing to sell them those shares at a specific strike price or a specific price, which is a strike price, on or before a certain date, which is an expiration date. So that's one way of doing things. Another way, the mo one of the most popular, is just buying and selling the options, where you just want to buy and sell 
um, you know, big name companies, but not uh, own the actual shares and not put out huge capital outlay to do it. Where you might want to trade an option on an Apple or a Facebook and not want to spend ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, whatever it is, you know, for capital to enter into the agreement. You want to just buy and sell the option and make profit on your options. So the option. Again, when somebody is agreeing to sell that to you, they're owning those let's, those shares of whatever company you're looking to get. And when you enter into an, a contract, one options contract is the equivalent to 100 shares. So when you hear the word options contract, that's the equivalent of one share, or 100 shares. So one contract is the equivalent of 100 shares. That's how uh, options work. So whether you're buying a call option, where, which means you believe the price of the stock is going to go up, or whether you buy a put option, which means you believe the price of the stock is going down, either way, that options contract is worth the equivalent of 100 shares. So somebody out there in the world owns those 100 share blocks of Apple or Facebook or Google, whatever stock you're looking to purchase, and they're going to they're willing to sell them to you um, at a specific price right here, <clears throat> which is called a strike price, and I'll show it to you, on or before a certain date, which is an expiration date. And again, an option, just like a stock or a bond, is a security. It's also a binding contract. Now they, when you enter an inter into an agreement with this person that owns those shares, they have to follow the rules of the option that you enter into. So if you agree or you decide down the road you want to exercise the contract and buy those shares at that specific strike price, they have to do it. Um, you know, if once you buy it and you own that option, if you want to sell that option to somebody else, uh, you're able to do that and get rid of it. But they have strictly defined terms, the people that own those shares, that they have to follow. But you as the buyer are not obligated to purchase those shares. You are entering into the agreement with the option. So, you know, you ha there is a chance you could buy that option. And if you didn't do your proper technical or fundamental analysis, the option can go against you and you could lose all of your premium that you paid. So, yes, it is risky. You'll, man you'll hear many times people say options are risky. And it's very true. Uh, when you don't own shares of a company uh, and, you know, there are many factors within an option that can go against you, they can be very risky. There's time value. Um, many, again, lots of layers, two parts of options. Again, I'm not going to try and explain them all into this video. That's why I encourage you to take our course over at bullishbearers.com where you can learn a lot more about options. But, you know, in essence, options are risky with lots of moving parts. But just wanted to read this definition to you. It can be kind of confusing if you, you're not really familiar with the concept. But just think about the concept of, you know, if you want to be able to make money in any market, whether the market goes up, whether it goes down, or whether it trades sideways, you can do that with options, where you can't do that with purchasing stock. The only way you can make money with stocks is if the market goes up, and that's it. However, you could make money if a stock goes down by shorting, um, so you can short stocks. That's a whole other concept. Uh, so you can, um, you know, you can do shorting, um, but you know it's very risky because let's say you own a stock at ten dollars and you want it to drop a couple dollars and make, you know, a couple dollars per share profit off of it. But some for some reason, you know, that stock has some sudden news come out that makes a sc stock skyrocket. You know, you could be on the hook for, you know, that stock could rise to $100, $200, and you can owe your broker massive amounts of money. So, you know, shorting, again, it's a whole other beast. That's not what um, this video is about. But um, the purpose with options in general is you can make money in any market. And you have the right, again, but not the obligation, to exercise your stock and buy these shares at a specific strike price if you so choose. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can always sell your option to some, to somebody else. I'm going to show you just a basic options chain and what it looks like. Um, again, if you want to learn more about options, take our uh, free options trading course at bullishbears.com. But right here, this is a basic options chain, and this is for the SPY or the S&P. Um, and you'll see, again, there's lots of moving parts. If you're new to options, this could be very confusing. But very simply, on the left side is call or calls. This means you believe the price of the stock is going up. And to the right side, um, you believe that the stock is going down. So if you do 
uh, if you believe that the stock's going to go down, you're going to buy a put. So if you believe, you know, the S&P or Facebook or Apple or whatever stock you're going to buy, if you believe that stock's going to go up, you would look over here and you would purchase a call. <clears throat> if you believe it's going down, you would buy a put. So when I when I was showing, saying or reading that definition before, it's saying at a certain price. You're looking to get the shares at a specific price. Let's go back there again. It says... Uh, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date. That specific price is called a strike price. So you can see there's many different strike prices. Uh, the last S&P, uh, the S&P, the last price was at 225.79. Actually, let's just move this to an actual stock. You know, many people will know uh, the Apple. You know, if you're new to options, you might not realize you can chain, uh, trade the S&P, but the SPY is very popular. But just for the sake of this video, let's just look at Apple. So Apple's the symbol here, and these are the strike prices for Apple. The last price it was traded at was $117.06. Um, so there's all these different strike prices, $107, $108, $109. The lower that you go on the strike price below the stock, the more premium that you pay because it's considered more in the money, it's more valuable because $107 is less than um, $117. So if you did your proper technical analysis and charting and you believe Facebook's going to move $10 or $20 in a certain a specific period of time, then you're going to choose the expiration date that you want the further out your expiration date, the further out the expiration date is, the higher you pay for a premium. So <clears throat> if you look just, for instance, at this $107 strike price, you're paying $10.55 if you bought it at the ask price as the for the premium. Now, remember, that's times 100 shares because one contract is the equivalent of 100 shares. So that would be $10.55 times 100. So I believe that's $1,055 to buy for the for the right to purchase Facebook at $107 by the expiration date of January 17th, uh, 2017. Now, if I wanted to go out, let's say, a few more months, because I let's say you believe that it might, you know, you wanted more time, uh, you wanted, a, you know, a different strike price, just to show you for an example how that looks differently, I'm going to go, go up here because you can add more strike prices. Um, so as you see, you go over to the strike prices change now, right? So they don't have a $107 strike price uh, with March, March 2017. So you'll see other strike prices here. And again, it's just for the sake of purposes of this video. Maybe it's not as popular that month, or maybe they're waiting to add more additional strike prices. But let me just go out even further and just say like almost a year out, and let's see what prices are for Facebook there. You know, you can see $105. You see it's now $18.35. You're paying more of a premium because you have a lot more time on your hands. Now, time can work against you if you predict things the wrong, the wrong way. So ideally, you're not really wanting to buy options and just let them sit and hold long term unless you're positive um, the stock is either going to go up that, you know, most of that time um, which would be a call, or whether you believe it's going to go down most of that time, which, which is a put. But remember, the price or the market, the stock market and prices of stocks always go up and down, up and down, up and down. And that can really, really eat at your premiums, um, you know, with your options contract. And that's why people say options are risky, because a lot of people just think, oh, I'm just going to buy and hold this contract and hold it for a long time, and I'm going to make a ton of money. Well, that's an ideal world if the stock always goes your way, but time value will eat against you. Um, so you have to decide when you're purchasing your option, what is your motive? Are you looking to exercise that stock and own those shares? So would you want to exercise the share, you know, your um, contract of Apple and own those shares? Or do you want to just buy and sell, you know, your options contract? Do you want to just own you know, an options premium, like when, you know, something you see here below and you can control, you know, 100 share blocks of Apple for each contract. Remember, each one of these is times 100. So that would be the price that you would pay to buy and sell Apple. And obviously, you know, if Apple goes your way, you know, that that contract becomes more valuable. So if you believe Apple's going to go up 
and you know you buy a strike price in the money which is over here again take our options course if you want to learn more about the terms in the money and out of the money but the lower the strike price is below the price of apple the more valuable it becomes so if it gets you know the stock price keeps rising you know you break even when you you know, in an ideal world, it doesn't work 100% like this, but you're basically taking the premium that you pay right here, plus the price of your strike price is your break even point. So in an ideal world, you know, it doesn't, again, there's other factors that break down within an option, but you're basically to break even on your purchase, it would be the price of the, um, at the ask price or whatever you purchase it at, plus the strike price is your break even point. Now again, if time's on your side, you might be able to break even much sooner on your options contract. Uh, but in theory, it's whatever you pay for your options um, contract, the premium plus your struck strike price uh, would equal your break even point. So again, you got to decide what strategy you're looking to do when trading options. Um, but it's basically controlling the prices of um, you know, having the ability to control big name stocks for, you know, low risk or low capital. You know, obviously $27.80 times 100 is much cheaper than buying 100 shares at $117. So again, it's a matter of your preference, what your trading style is. Do you want to own shares of, um, you know, major companies and just be able to, you know, start off a little bit less risk with owning it, you know, getting into a premium that's less than the outward capital of buying shares outright, knowing that you did your proper analysis so you can buy the shares at a discount, or do you want to just, you know, buy and sell your premiums and make money off that way off controlling big name companies such as Apple and Facebook? Again, it's all a matter of preference, but you know, the ability to be able to make money in any market when the market goes up, down, or trade sideways is the appeal of trading options. So again, if you want to learn more about trading options and the concept of options, again, it's a beast. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of moving parts. And we do our best in our free options trading course at bullishbears.com to help you with that concept. Um, but even as, as much as we break it down, there's still so many times, so many terminologies. There's so many different ways uh, to be able to trade options. But you want to start with the basics first. Once you have the fundamentals down, then you can move into the advanced tra strategies as you become more comfortable. So make sure you head over to bullishbears.com. The link will be below in our description box. Take our free options trading course. As well as when you're over there, make sure you join our free Facebook trading community. Um, it's also called the Bullish Bears. It's on Facebook where we are a group of traders from around the world that loves helping you know, people learn about the stock market, whether it's stocks or uh, options, or we share our picks with each other. We just have a lot of fun um, trading together. We're a very collaborative community. So feel free to come and join us. We would welcome you as part of our community. And also to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel before you leave as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. We hope that you enjoy our options trading course, and we'll see you in our community. Enjoy.